Okay, guys, this is problem number 10 from chapter 13. And the section is on um, applications of uh, Laplace transform. So this one took me four hours to do. So for sure, you guys, if you got help from this video, show me some love and share the video, like the Facebook, or do something to get the discovery out there so that my channel is a lot more interactive. And I think that has to do with just the sheer number of people. More people, like even now, the channel is getting more views and I'm seeing more comments of people helping each other. And that's what I like to see. So remember, four hours, so the least, the very minimum you can do is to share the video or like the Facebook. Anyway, so I like this problem a whole lot, even though it was four hours of my life, um, because it really uses everything that we've, um, it's a comprehensive problem. It's a test on everything we've done to date, from engineering one to engineering two to engineering three. So um, it was fun in a twisted way. Um, so what we have is we have this circuit here, a 50 volt independent voltage source, and this is 400 ohms resistance, 1200. This is a capacitor with value 2 microfarads, and this is an inductor, oops, yep, yeah, with 10 million henrys of inductance, and 500 ohms of resistance there, 125, 137.5 voltage, independent voltage source. Before the switching happens, before time zero, we have a switch here, and then when time zero comes, it switches and disconnects this section of the circuit from this section of the circuit. Okay, what we are looking for is we want to construct the S domain circuit for time positive, so after the switching. We want to look at the circuit after the switching happens, which means we also have to look at the circuit before the switching happens because capacitance, there is some kind of voltage on the capacitor, and there's some, the meaning the capacitor is in its steady state, it's charged up to some level, and there's some kind of current going through the inductor. We have to find those two values in order to represent them in the S domain. Okay, so we're looking also for the S domain voltage across the capacitor, and lastly we're going to do an inverse Laplace transform to find the voltage across the capacitor in the time domain. Whew. Whew. I'm exhausted. Anyway, so taking a look at time zero, the first thing that we have always done in all of my videos is looked at the circuit before time zero um, and then the circuit after time zero, and they're asking us to do that. But we can't draw the S domain circuit after time zero without knowing the initial value across the capacitor and the initial current through the inductor. So let's look at that. So at time zero, we have 50, 400, 1200, and then we have the switch is gone. So there's no connection here, it's up here somewhere. So there's an open there, and then we continue here, and then the capacitor in the DC steady state is an open, and then the inductor is a short. So we have some kind of inductor current going that way, and then we have some kind of capacitor, the open circuit, what I'm going to call it. The capacitor is charged to some level. And then here I have my independent um, voltage source. And then here, 10 milli Henry, here I have a connection to my 500. Okay, and oops, we have a close, a short circuit right there at time zero. It opens at time zero. So let me, because it's so easy to make mistakes on this, I'm just going to double check. My circuit looks the way, that, okay, great. Now I have um, what my circuit looks like before time zero. Um, so, I want to know what this is because I need, I'm going to call this V open circuit, op, um, open capacitor, whatever. VOC is what I'm calling it. I need to know what that is because in the S domain, a capacitor is represented by um, 
initial voltage across the, um, the initial voltage in the capacitor plus 1 over SC. So we need that. Um, so of course we are going to use K via KCL, right? The node voltage method to find VOC. So I have a node here, I have a node here. So I'm going to write my node voltage um, equations here. So node voltage at VA. So node voltage at VA is going to be VA minus 50 over 400 plus VA. And since I only have a jumper from here to here, that tells me it's a supernode. So VOC, V open capacitor, is the same thing as VA. So I'm going to continue writing my voltage equation or my KCL equations. This isn't open. I don't have a, 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 an equation there. I have current through here. So I'm going to go VA minus um, 137.5 over 500. And that is equal to zero. So I would like to double check. And I'm missing a term. So I'm glad I double checked. I'm missing this term right here. So I'm just going to stick it in at the very end, even if it is a second term. VA over 1200 plus equals zero. Double check. VA minus 500 over 400. Check. VA over 1200. Check. VA uh, minus 137.5 over 500 is equal to zero. That is my KVL equation, or KCL equation at VA. And I'm going to leave that to the viewer to do, um, to solve by yourself, because if I actually do things and, you know, well, for one thing, it's not engineering. It's just an application of your calculator. You can do it. Um, that will give you VA is equal to... I'm actually going to call this VOC, V open capacitor, that's the initial charge. Initial charge across capacitor is 75 volts. That is thing number one that we need. Thing number two, thing number two that we need is current across the inductor. So that's this current that I'm looking for. For that, I use mesh currents. So, for that, I use mesh currents. And remember, this is an open, so nothing is here. So I have two meshes. I have two meshes. I have some unknown current through here that I'm going to call I sub A, and this here is I sub L. That's my inductor current, and I'm looking for that. Um, so mesh at I A is going to be minus 50 plus 400 I A plus 1200 times I A minus I L is equal to zero. So now we group together our um, coefficients. I have I A, and my coefficients for that is 400 plus 1200 plus I L, and my coefficient for that is 1200, negative 1200, and that's equal to my constant, which is 50. That's the equation number one that I need, so let me double check that. IA, 400 plus 1200 IL, negative 1200 and 50. Yes. So, now I'm going to write the mesh equation for IL. So mesh at IL is 1200 times IL minus IA plus um, 500 I sub L. That's equal to zero. So now I'm going to group all of my um, coefficients. For IA, I have negative 1,200 and plus IL. And my coefficients there are 1,200 um, plus 500. I have no constants, so that's equal to 0. Double check. Negative 1,200, 1,200 plus 500 IL is equal to... And I forgot the 137.5, so I started double checking because I realized that when I do things on video, when I do it on paper, and then sometimes I make typos or forget circuit elements randomly, that's not good. So then the constant goes on the other side is negative 137.5. Negative 137.5. Double check. 
negative 1200, 1200 plus 500, and negative 137.5. And by the way, I do that all the time on exams too, like do it right on paper and then um, do something idiotic. On, um. Anyways, moving right on. So when you saw that, you're going to find this IA is um, negative 0 0.0625. Um, amps and IL in this direction is negative point zero point one two five um, negative zero point one two five amps which means the current is really flowing in this direction this is the direction of positive current so but the direction that I have indicated there works out to be um, IL is equal to negative zero point one two five amps now we have the information that we need to draw the time, the um, circuit in the S domain for F post switching. So after the switching happens, we have, the circuit looks like this. It's completely disconnected from this anymore. It's no longer connected to that, and this is closes up. So then we have this point B switch, that's the switch. Now I've got 500. And then I have 125. And then I have in the S domain. Hang on. Pause. One second. Pause. Ah, nuts. I don't have a pause function. Nuts. Nice.